Chapter 17 Lauren felt her heart melt as he said he was trying to decide if she was the girl for him. It was hard to know how to react to his words, because she badly wanted that to be the case. Finally, she nodded. That sounds good. I'll try not to be furious with you anymore. That would help things along a great deal, he said with a grin. She watched him as he drove her car, looking completely at ease with the unfamiliar vehicle. Thanks for being willing to drive. I really enjoy driving. It's honestly one of my favorite things about this area. The driving is a challenge with all the turns and mountain passes. Lauren grinned. Just wait until winter when the mountain passes are covered with snow. And then she realized he probably wouldn't be there in the winter. Oh, you'll be back in Louisiana by then, won't you? She really wasn't looking forward to him leaving, but she was looking forward to him leaving, but she wasn't looking forward to him leaving. He was making her brain do somersaults. I'm really not sure. My book has to be done by October 21st, and I figured I'd be done by the end of September, but I'm not sure I can do that now. I've wasted too much time acting like a lovesick puppy. A lovesick puppy, huh? I like the mental image that conjures up for me. Lauren pointed out his turn, and then they were at the Oregon Trail Center. There's this guided tour thing, but it costs money. The exhibits are free though. What's on the guided tour, he asked. Someone goes through with you, and they explain how things are done. You get to ride in a simulated wagon, so you can feel how it would have felt. Most people would walk beside the wagon all day though. It was a long arduous journey. I like it, because it helps me feel like I really understand what it was like to journey west a century and a half ago. Let's do the whole thing then. It sounds like fun to me, and I'll learn something. And it means more time with you. Have you ever made out in a covered wagon? He waggled his eyebrows at her, and she couldn't help but laugh. You know, I haven't. I'm not even sure what it would be like. But she did know it probably wasn't for her. We'll find out. I'm here to educate you. She laughed. Well, if we have the wagon to ourselves, maybe I wouldn't protest too much. She wasn't making out with him if there were others there though. She wasn't an exhibitionist. He laughed, taking her hand and leading her inside. They went to the front desk, and he bought the tickets for the guided tour, and she was happy to go along with him. Unfortunately, there was a family with young children in the wagon with them, so they were just able to hold hands, but no kissing was allowed. He leaned over and whispered, I'll make it up to you later, and Lauren couldn't disguise her laughter. The man made her heart sing, and she wished she knew why him and not someone a little more, well, normal. Perhaps it was because she wasn't exactly normal herself. She would never know for sure. After the wagon ride, there was a simulated campfire, and they were told the fire was in the exact place the pioneers had built their fires more than 150 years before. It felt like they were part of history as they stood there, listening to a teenage girl explain about how the first white settlers in the area had done things. When the tour was over, they headed to the basement where the exhibits were. There were so many different things the early settlers had used, including their musical instruments and many of their tools for daily living. There were two different types of butter churns and even an old typewriter. It was all so fascinating. The top floor of the museum housed a quilt show, and they walked around in awe. I made a quilt once with my mother but as rewarding as it was to sleep under that quilt, the time it took was way too much for me. I cannot imagine spending so many hours to make something, and then just selling it. She shook her head. So many women enjoyed quilting enough that they felt they needed to sell what they did so they could make the next quilt. Do you like crafty things? he asked. Lauren shrugged. I'm trying lots of different crafts, because that's what my mother liked so much. She taught me to sew, and I'm making different kinds of aprons to sell as part of the Band B experience. I'm not sure if it's for me, 
but I'm at least trying. Still kind of trying to discover what I want to be when I grow up. She said the words, but she didn't mean them. She was pretty sure she'd found her place in the world, but telling him might be a mistake. He might think she was asking for help with her writing, and that simply wasn't the case at all. Can you make a living doing that type of thing? He asked. She shrugged. No idea. I mean, I can make a living cooking and cleaning at the band B, but adding in crafts can't hurt. And I got a significant inheritance when my parents died. I own a fifth of the band B, so I not only draw a salary for my work there, but I also get a fifth of all profits. That makes sense. What did your parents do? Well, my dad was a dentist specializing in TMJ. At his funeral, there were so many people telling me how he changed their lives for the better. It was heart-wrenching. And mom stayed home with us until I started school, and then she worked part-time for a craft store. She was the craftiest person you've ever met. I kind of feel guilty that I'm not better about following in her footsteps. Her legacy should live on. What kind of crafts? Justin asked, seeming to be genuinely interested in her parents and how they'd lived their lives. She made a mental tick in his plus column. Anything and everything. She made me Barbie furniture and a huge Barbie castle from plastic canvas. She cross-stitched a Monopoly board, and my dad built a table with a glass top to fit over the Monopoly board. It was amazing. We played on that table a lot. She shook her head. She quilted, painted, crocheted, knitted, and sewed. If you can think of something crafty, she at least tried it. She was truly amazing. I'm sure you miss her a lot. I do. Every day. The others were all on their own when they died, but I'd just moved back into their house after graduating. Mom was teaching me to cook, and I was interviewing for every job that sounded vaguely interesting to me. Lauren shrugged. I just wish I'd figured out where I was going with life before they died. I know both of them were proud of me just for finishing school, but they'd have been so much prouder if I'd actually done something with my life. He frowned. You're young. You'll figure out what you want someday. How long have you known you wanted to be a writer? Lauren asked. She was fascinated by his choice of career and thrilled that he was now talking about it openly. I guess I was in third or fourth grade, but most writers I know took a lot longer to figure it out. As soon as I discovered Encyclopedia Brown and the Hardy Boys, I was hooked for life. She smiled. I was a Trixie Belden fan myself. She read all of the children's mystery books she could get her hands on. She loved them. Oh, and the boxcar children. As they wandered, looking at all the quilts, they talked about the books they'd read as children. She couldn't believe how easily the two of them could discuss anything and everything. So, did you decide to be a serial killer because of the boxcar children or the Hardy Boys? Lauren asked with a twinkle in her eye. Oh, definitely the Hardy Boys. The boxcar children were good, but the Hardy Boys were so much manlier. Like me. Justin poked out his skinny chest, and they both laughed. This place is neat. Especially considering it's free, except for that one exhibit. We'll need to check out the gift shop on the way out. I bet my mom and sisters would love to get postcards from me. You haven't sent postcards to your parents yet, she asked, a bit shocked. When she traveled, it was one of the first things she did. Send something to family. The man was crazy. If you drop them on the front desk, we'll see that they're stamped and mailed out for you. All you have to do is address them and write something, and you write for a living. He shrugged. I'm avoiding their calls for the most part too. I call them back on my time instead of letting them always try to interfere with my writing. What do your parents do? She asked. With the way he talked, it didn't feel like he was as close to his parents as she was to hers. My dad works in a factory, 
and my mom has always stayed at home. Now that my youngest sister, Missy, is off to college, I'm sure she's thinking about doing something else, but I have no idea what she'll do. Really? She's never mentioned anything she'd like to do? Well, she was planning to teach after college, but she met dad, got married, and was pregnant with me almost immediately. I'm not sure if she'll try to teach or maybe she'll substitute teach. She's always enjoyed being around kids. That sounds awesome. I think she should teach. She couldn't imagine going to school for something so specific and then not doing it. You've never even met her. How can you have an opinion? Haven't you noticed yet that I have opinions about everything? Lauren asked. It's one of my best qualities. Justin shook his head as he reached for her hand and they went back to the first floor and the gift shop. He found several things he wanted to send home, including a huckleberry-flavored milk chocolate bar, huckleberry taffy, and he chose a dozen postcards. There. Souvenir buying is done. Lauren gaped at the small amount of stuff in his pile. That's really all you buy when you're on vacation? I usually take an extra suitcase, just for all the random crap I'm taking home with me. Remind me not to travel with you. That would make me crazy. Justin took his purchases to the front desk and paid for them. When he was finished, they went back to her car. Now for supper. I researched as much as I could. Do you want Cattleman's, Bluebird Inn, or Cooper's? Lauren pursed her lips as she thought about it. Let's do Cooper's. That's always been a favorite of mine. She loved the view of the lake from the restaurant. It was perched on a hill, next to a golf course, and you could see the lake out all of the windows along one side. It was absolutely breathtaking. He put the car in drive and started back toward the lake. Do you come to Montpelier often? he asked. It seemed to be the most populated place in the area. Yeah, this is the only real grocery store. We have that little place in town, but it's not the same as having a big full grocery store. The one in town is more of a big convenience store. If I don't feel like going all the way to Logan or Pocatello, I just drive here. And the county fair is here. That's going on right now. Is it fun? he asked. I grew up going to it, and I thought it was the bee's knees, but honestly, it's pretty small. If you don't like browsing around, then you won't be a fan. There are some pretty amazing jams you can buy and I really like shopping at all the little booths. And they have some food trucks with decent food. It seems like the cheerleaders usually do a food stand to raise money. She shrugged. It's definitely a small town thing, but I'd go again in a heartbeat. Then we'll have to plan a day to go together. If there are games, I'll try to win you a teddy bear, and you can clutch it in your arms while I feel all macho and stuff. You just want to go for research, don't you? You're trying to figure out how to kill someone at a fair. Lauren knew he had to have an ulterior motive. Well, that and I want to spend time with the most beautiful woman I've ever met. Kiss up. He laughed. You already see right through me. I'm not sure this could possibly work between us. I'm not either, but I do know you're a writer and make crap up at will because that's what writers do. Very true. It's my best quality, Justin said with a grin. Lying for a living. I'm dating a professional liar. Lauren couldn't believe it, but she wanted more time with him. She must have truly lost her mind. Did you ever dream life would be so good? He asked. Chapter 18 The whole drive to Fish Haven, they chatted about a variety of things always returning to writing. Justin loved talking about what he was working on, and people at home were never willing to discuss his work. Lauren seemed to be very interested in his process and other aspects of writing, and it didn't take him long to understand what was going through her mind. You want to write, don't you? Why hadn't he realized it before? It made so much sense with the kind of imagination she had. 
I've been writing. I started writing before I realized you were a writer. I'm not going to take advantage of knowing you, though. I want to do it all on my own. He started to offer to read something she'd written, but he made it a point to never offer. It always ended up taking up too much of his time, and people said they wanted honest feedback, but what they really wanted was to be told they were amazing, and they could be published without trouble. He was never willing to lie to them. It just wasn't worth the trouble it could cause. What are you working on? he asked. She shrugged. I'm writing something for me at the moment. It's all about growing up spending my summers at Bear Lake. All of the things I can remember, starting with building a sandcastle when I was three. I'd like to be able to publish it just for my sisters, and not for anyone to buy, but I have no idea how to go about doing that. He frowned. I think you could do it through indie publishing on Amazon, but I'm not sure. I could ask a few friends who are indies if you'd like. He didn't have a lot of spare time to follow up on his offer, but he'd make the time for her. Indie? Doesn't that mean I'd have to write about India or something? That's when he realized just how new to the writing journey she was. She wasn't asking him for help. She was wanting to find her own way. Indie is short for independent. People who put their books up on the internet without the benefit of a publisher. I thought about going that route, but I submitted to a publisher when I finished my first novel, and they offered me a deal. At first, I wasn't making much, but each subsequent book has earned me a bigger royalty. I wouldn't be averse to going indie, but for right now, I'm happy with my publisher. He thought back to the hours he'd put in working in bookstores until he'd made enough to live on his earnings from writing. It had been very tough going for a while, but he'd always managed. Makes sense to me. I'll research how to do it. Don't bother asking anyone. I can figure it out on my own. No big deal. You know I can help, right? Lauren shook her head. I know you're feeling pressured by your own deadline. There's no need for you to spend time trying to figure things out for me. Seriously. If I'm going to do this, I'm going to do it on my own, not by riding on your coattails. Justin knew he'd feel the same way in her position. Stubborn little thing, aren't you? He couldn't help but tease her about it. It was how they dealt with one another. That's your favorite thing about me. He parked the car in the Cooper's parking lot and he turned to her in the car, cupping her face in his hands. I just need to get this out of the way before we go in. He lowered his mouth to hers, needing to taste her lips and feel her against him. It's all he'd been able to think about all day, and here he was with the perfect opportunity, and he wasn't going to pass it up. When he raised his head, her eyes were still closed and her lips slightly parted and moist from his kiss. He ran his thumb over her bottom lip and opened his door. Let's go eat. Lauren nodded, getting out and tucking her hand into his. Asterisk. As they walked into the restaurant, Lauren couldn't stop thinking about how incredible the kiss had been. She'd enjoyed their kisses on the beach, but this one, well, it was the kiss to end all kisses. She knew she wanted to spend the rest of her life with Justin Thibodeau. She also knew she was crazy for making the decision so quickly after spending so much time hating him, but, it was right, and she knew it. There would be no more thoughts of calling Dr. Lachille. They were seated on the balcony, overlooking the lake. The view was breathtaking. Have you been here before? She asked. This has always been one of my favorite restaurants in the Bear Lake area. He shook his head. I've really not eaten out much here. I went to the pizza place in Garden City the night of the wedding, and that's the only time I've eaten out. I usually just grab something from the taco boat and eat whatever you cook. Part of the reason I decided to stay at a bed and breakfast is I wanted meals to be easy. And are they? You know, we never plan to make suppers available to guests. It just kind of happened, and it worked out for us. 
Lots more work for me, of course, but I'm enjoying it. Meals are super easy. Lunches are the hardest, but I can either have you make me a sandwich or eat from the taco boat. Both are perfectly fine options. I don't need a heavy lunch with the breakfasts and suppers you serve. Good. I'm glad it works well for you. It may not be perfect for everyone, but you have been our only long-term resident. That's true, he shrugged. I like being the only long-term resident. If only you'd stop complaining about the messes in my room. The messes in your room are ridiculous, you know. I don't know how anyone can trash a place quite that badly in only a week's time. Lauren shook her head at him. I hope you have a maid at home. Not really, but I pay my sisters to clean my place once a week. I alternate between them because they all need money. That's nice of you. Do they complain? Oh, constantly. At home I leave Grubhub containers everywhere. I tend to order enough meals to last for a few days, and then I eat on them for a while. I hate breaking my flow to have something delivered. So much easier to just grab something from the fridge and nuke it. He shrugged. I guess I'm the same creature of habit wherever I go. Guess so, she said, shaking her head. You need a live-in maid. Probably. I get so wrapped up in whatever I'm writing, it's hard for me to care about what's around me. I seriously get so involved it's scary. I don't think I'd eat at all if my mother didn't call me three times a day to remind me. Of course, while I'm here, I don't need reminding, because I know I'll see you in the kitchen, and that's enough to bring me out regularly. Well, isn't that sweet? I remind you to eat, you think of me and think of food, did the man have any idea how to talk to women? She was convinced he had never had a real relationship, or he'd be much better at this. He laughed. Not really. You know what I'm saying. I sometimes come out of my room when I'm not even hungry, hoping you'll be doing your thing in the kitchen. Really? Yeah, there was this one night when Taylor was in there instead of you. I would have just gone back to my room, but she asked me if I needed anything, and I ended up eating an entire meal I wasn't even hungry for. He shook his head. Silly, huh? I couldn't just say, I was hoping to see Lauren. Of course, that was right after I'd killed you in my book, and I needed to see you alive and moving. So now you think you have magic powers and think you can kill someone with a stroke of your keyboard? Maybe we should find you some mental health help. Maybe, he reached out and took her hand in his. I haven't even glanced at the menu yet. Perhaps we should do that. Yeah, I'm sure you'll want to work when we get back. Not until late. I want this evening to last as long as it possibly can. I hate that we have to set something up and wait and make sure you have someone who can take care of the kitchen, and I have to wait and make sure I'm caught up on my word count, which I'm not, just so you know. I'm a full week behind schedule, and my editor is breathing down my neck to finish. I guess it's a good and bad thing to have fans waiting on that next release, huh? Definitely. I mean, I'm glad people love my books, but there's pressure involved in making sure the next one is polished and out before people have a chance to forget who I am and what I'm writing. She smiled at that. So, when do you think you'll go back to Louisiana? All at once, she couldn't bear the idea of him leaving. Surely, he'd find a way to stay there. I'm not sure. I might just go back so I can pack up my things and move here. Or I might have my mother go to my storage unit and hire a mover to bring things here. I'll need to find a house, of course. Lauren felt a bit of excitement run through her. You mean we might be having more than just a vacation romance? She needed this to last a lifetime, and she hoped he was feeling the same way she was. Oh, yes. I feel like I'm having the romance of a lifetime, not just one for a short while. I am thinking long term, like marriage and the whole nine yards. As soon as we feel like we know each other better, we'll figure that all out. 
Sounds good to me. They were interrupted by a waitress. Do you two know what you want? She asked. Lauren bit her lip. Can I get a root beer? I'll figure out what I want to eat before you bring it back. Haven't looked at the menu yet, have you? The girl asked. Nope. Yeah, I was afraid to approach the table because you two were so busy looking into each other's eyes. The waitress didn't seem upset by it. She was just stating facts. Wise move, Lauren said. I'll have a root beer as well, Justin said. And I'll look at the menu too. Thanks for keeping us on track. The waitress just laughed. First date? Hopefully my last first date ever, Justin said softly. While the waitress got their drinks, they both chose what they wanted to eat and then set their menus down. I hope this is my last first date ever as well, Lauren told him. I hate first dates. Of course, she might just hate dating, because she'd never really progressed to a second date. She'd never been interested enough. After their meal, they went and got some of the raspberry shakes Bear Lake was famous for, and they sat in the car drinking them and talking. Lauren was surprised that she never wanted the night to end. The pep talk Amanda had given her had her feeling much better about the entire situation. When it was finally time to drive back to the band B, they parked in the driveway and went for a walk on the beach, holding hands. I can't believe that tonight went so well, Lauren said. We didn't bicker even once. That's true, but don't worry, I'm feeling as strongly for you now as I was whenever we fought. Good. Because I don't want you to see another girl and start following her around like a crazed stalker. Justin stopped walking and pulled her toward him. So now I'm a crazed stalker? Is that a step up or a step down from being a serial killer? I don't think it's either. It's just you. She stepped toward him and rested her forehead against his shoulder. I'm falling for you big time, Justin Thibodeau. Don't you dare break my heart again. My sisters will come after you and do terrible things to you. He tilted her face up and kissed her softly. No broken hearts allowed. Chapter 19 Lauren felt like she was floating on a cloud for the next couple of weeks. She did her work around the band B, spent time with Justin, and in her spare time, she wrote more on her Bear Lake memoirs. The two of them walked together every evening, talking about their days, what they'd written, and anything else that came to mind. She came to understand his family, and he came to understand hers. The first week of September, he sprang a surprise on her. I need to go home to New Orleans for a few days. One of my sisters is getting married this weekend. She stopped walking on the beach and turned to him in shock. You have an engaged sister, and you never told me? How could he have not mentioned that at least once? Justin shook his head. She got engaged last night and decided to marry this weekend. It's completely spur of the moment and absolutely crazy. I was hoping I could talk you into flying there with me. There's too much to do to get ready for my friend Stacy's wedding. I can't just take off. He sighed, obviously disappointed. I can understand that. I'll probably have to spend a long weekend. I'll fly down on Friday and come back on Monday. He stepped closer, leaning down to kiss her. I'm going to miss you. A lot. And I'll miss you. Just don't be going all crazy for those southern bells while you're away from me. She didn't know why that fear struck her so strongly, but it did. He laughed. If a southern bell was what I wanted, don't you think I'd have found one without having to travel so far to find someone like you? He shook his head. You're the girl I've waited my whole life for. There's no chance I'm going to fall for someone back in Louisiana. I hope not. I'll try to stay faithful to you for those four days, she teased him. Do you need someone to take you to the airport? It would take forever, but if he needed her to do it, she would. I wouldn't ask that of you. It's a three-hour drive each way, 
and you'd spend way too much time on the road. No, I'll just park at one of the shuttle places that will drive me to the airport. No big deal. Well, I'll be waiting on you to come back then. Don't let your family talk you into staying there. She could just see him going to his sister's wedding, meeting some girl, and falling in love. Why couldn't she get that image out of her head? Justin sighed. If they could talk me into that, they'd have done it before I came here in the first place. Now I have even more reason to come back. Glad to hear it. She wrapped her arms around his neck and looked into his eyes. Don't forget I'm waiting for you, pining away. You know, if you gave me your phone number, I could call you. She laughed. We've been dating for weeks, and you still don't have my phone number? That's insane. Neither of them had really thought about it though. They were in contact every single day, without ever touching their phones. Well, living under the same roof makes it easy for me to get in touch with you whenever I want. I just wander into the kitchen. That's true. I guess I'll let you have my phone number if you promise not to text me naked pics. She carefully kept a straight face as she said the words, knowing he'd be shocked by them. Justin gaped at her. What have I ever done that makes you think I'd text you naked pics, he asked. She shrugged. Nothing. I just thought I'd let you know I wouldn't appreciate them. Dooley noted. Now how is your writing coming along? Do you feel like you'll finish soon? He obviously wanted to shy away from that topic. As soon as you're gone, it'll be easy. Many less distractions. I'll make it my goal to finish before you come home. While planning a wedding. She needed to do a Skype call with Stacy on Friday afternoon to choose the foods for the wedding. And then she really only had a week to get them ready. Brandon had said he'd be part of the call, and Hannah was going to be there to finalize the flavors for the cake. She and the baker who would be in charge of the bakery inside her bookstore would do it together. Sounds good to me. I'm going to check on you every night to make sure you're really working and not spending all your time pining for me. Lauren laughed. As if. But she knew she would. She was used to her daily dose of Justin and being without him was going to be hard. He pulled his phone from his pocket. Before I forget, phone number? She rattled off her number, still a Salt Lake City number, because it was easier to just not change it. Don't abuse the privilege of having it now. I'll do my best. He sent her a quick text. Now you have my number too. I really am going to miss you, Justin, but don't tell anyone. They'll think you make me weak. I don't make you anything, Lauren. You are the strongest woman I know. I wish I could make you need me. But then you'd no longer be you. I guess I'm not the needy sort. But she was. She wanted to beg him not to go, because she hated the idea of being without him, even for a short while, but there was no real choice. He needed to go support his sister, just as she would support one of hers. Well, try to get a little needier while I'm gone, would you? He kissed her tenderly. Just a little though. She stroked the side of his neck, wanting to be closer to him, but needing space with his upcoming trip. She couldn't throw a fit about him going, but she sure wanted to. I'll do my best to be needier. Not sure it will work, but I'll try. He grinned. That's all I ever ask of you. That you try to be needy. She laughed. I'm not sure that's true. I mean, you expect me to go out with you, go on walks with you, spend time with you. I think you might be the needy one. Don't forget that I expect you to kiss me. That's a necessity. Of course, it is. Without kisses, this whole thing would be for naught. Would be for naught? Are you reading medieval romances again? You know I think you're wasting your time with those. He shook his head at her. Lauren grinned up at him. I'll never tell. Besides, when do I have time to read anything when you take up every waking moment that I'm not working or writing? 
You cramp my style. Aren't you glad I'm leaving for the weekend then? Justin asked. No. Not at all. I wish you'd stay here forever. She stepped closer to him and just leaned against him. Thinking of him going was making her feel all teary, and that was ridiculous. He'd only be gone for a weekend, and that was nothing. When he left for good, then her heart could break into tiny bits. I'll be back on Monday. It'll be a quick trip, and you won't even have time to miss me. Of course, my feelings for you are stronger, and I'll miss you terribly. She shook her head. Compared to me, you don't even know what feelings are. No, I'll miss you more, and we both know it. Maybe you could clean my room while I'm gone, that would make you miss me less. She smiled at that. Getting angry with you for a few minutes is not going to make me miss you less. Not at all. She took his hand and started pulling him back toward the house. We didn't have dessert, and I made a key lime pie. I think I need some so I don't spend the whole night crying into my pillow about you leaving. You're just using that as an excuse to force me to have dessert with you. Well, yeah. What else would I do? They were both in good spirits when they got back to the kitchen, and she served them each a piece of pie. The fairies were at it again, and the kitchen magically got cleaned, she said, looking around her, with a smile. Now that it's off-season, I almost feel guilty when the others do chores for me. We only have three rooms booked, and it feels like a vacation. Speaking of food, we weren't. Well, we are now. I'm going to get my mom's dirty rice recipe for you and bring you back my favorite Creole seasoning. And bring back some beignet mixes. As much as I do not miss being at home, I do miss the food at times. Good Cajun food isn't something you can get outside of Louisiana. And you miss good Cajun food? Lauren asked. She hadn't considered that the food he'd grown up with would be so different from what she served. Maybe it would be good if she experimented with Cajun food while he was gone. Definitely. He finished his pie and took his plate to the sink. On that note, I need to say good night. I have a huge writing day tomorrow, and then I need to leave Friday morning. Lauren immediately walked to him and kissed him good night. I'll plan to put your meals in containers for your room tomorrow, she said softly. Just know that while you're gone, I'll be here missing you. After he'd gone to his room, she stood and hand-washed the few dishes they dirted, her mind on him going. For some reason, she couldn't get out of her mind that he was leaving and never coming back. It was a ridiculous thought, and she knew it, but their strange relationship hadn't exactly made her feel confident. She went up to her room, passing Amanda and Ryan, who were in the living room, snuggled together on the couch watching Lois and Clark. She wanted the kind of relationship Amanda had with Ryan. They both worked full-time jobs and still had time to spend together. Did being a writer mean you had no time for the people you cared about? Chapter 20 True to her word, Lauren wrote as much as she could during the time Justin was gone. She had her Skype meeting with Stacy about the food for the reception, and continued to work toward that project, making a couple of different recipes and waylaying anyone who walked past the kitchen to make them tell her which was better. The first evening Justin was gone, he simply texted that he was in his hotel in New Orleans and too tired to call, so he was going to crash. Lauren responded, trying to sound upbeat, but truly saddened by the fact he wasn't taking the time to call. She'd been looking forward to hearing his voice all day. All right. I need to write anyway. I miss you. His response was quick. Miss you too. Good night. She refused to let it bother her, because she really did need to write. The supper dishes were done, and she had everything prepped for breakfast the following morning. Now she could go write. When she got to her room, she read through everything she had written the day before, and she realized that she was up to the current summer. Should she write about the summer and her parents' death? Or stop there? 
She realized she needed to work through how she'd felt with her parents, so she began writing about graduating and talked about how it had been a few years since she'd been to the lake and how she'd felt at calling her name. Writing about the death of the two most influential and loving people in her life had her crying and going through half a box of tissues. She could still remember the shock she'd felt when Alyssa had called her to tell her. My four sisters and I had spent the whole day together at Alyssa's house trying to figure out a way to keep our parents from selling the lake house, the house that meant more to us than just about anything in the world. It was a day filled with laughter and snacks. Alyssa went all out making food for us, and we sat around making up crazy plans that we knew we'd never carry out. I had just walked in the door after thinking I needed to spend more time with my sisters, at the lake house or away from it, when I got a call from Alyssa. She told me that our parents had just been killed in a car wreck. I have to admit, my happy buzz from the day with my sisters dissipated immediately. I didn't believe her at first. How could they have died before we told them what we wanted to do with the lake house? And then I realized Alyssa wouldn't call unless she was sure. The five of us all stayed under one roof all week as we made plans for the funeral, talked about precious memories of our parents, and slowly started to make plans for our futures. And it all came back to the lake house, the place that hosted so many wonderful summers of swimming, fishing, and just being together. That house, well, it was everything to us. It was the core of our family, and none of us could bear to think about what we'd do with it now. The will left it to the five of us equally, but it was stipulated that we either share it or sell it. One of us couldn't have it. We were all at a crossroads, and at that moment, we knew what we had to do. Really, it was Taylor's idea. She suggested we turn the house into a bed and breakfast. With twelve bedrooms, it made sense to all five of us, and soon we were making plans to move to Bear Lake. Now, we've all spent our first summer in years in Bear Lake. We have a business we all profit from, though really only two of us work here. I cook and tailor and I clean together, and she manages the place. Alyssa is married to Nick, the contractor we hired to remodel the house. Taylor is dating Brandon, the taco boat guy who brings tacos to us and our guests every day at noon. I'm sure they'll be engaged any day. Amanda is engaged to Ryan, Nick the contractor's best friend, who owns the local hardware store. Kayla just told me last night that she and Max, who owns a local bar, are getting married. We've all found love here. Did I not mention my love before? It's Justin. At first, I really didn't think we'd get along, but now that we're dating, I can't imagine life without him. He's a mystery writer, well, my favorite writer, so I'm shocked I didn't know what he looked like. Justin's been a guest in our home since June 1st, the day we opened for business. I thought he was a serial killer at first, but that's a story for another day. But I can say unequivocally that Romriel House, the band B we run in Richland, Idaho, brought us all of our loves in one way or the other. This place, the house and the lake, mean more to me and my happiness than words can express. And this isn't the end of a story, it's just the beginning. This is the part where I spend the rest of my days here in this tiny little town filled with love and wonderful, memorable people. Lauren stopped writing there wiping her eyes with tissues. It was all true. Every last word. She took her fingers off the keyboard and went and took a shower, finally feeling as if all the emotions she'd held pent up were out. She could really be herself now. And she was a writer. There was no longer a doubt in her mind. Perhaps she wasn't good enough to be published yet, but it was a starting place. She'd look into being an indie as Justin had called it. She'd read all about it online, and she knew the steps she had to take. But first? She was sending the manuscript to her creative writing teacher from college to make sure it was good enough to actually publish. She wasn't sure yet, but it felt good. And right. As soon as she was out of the shower, she emailed the document to her former professor, 
a lovely woman who had always said that if they finished something that they wanted an opinion on, they could always send it to her. Lauren was afraid of the response, so she immediately went to bed after sending it, closing her eyes and wishing for quick sleep. No Justin, and now she'd just done the bravest thing she'd done in a very long time. Asterisk. Justin hoped to get a few words in Saturday morning before the wedding, but his mother started calling before he was even awake for the day. Hello? Missy needs your help. She's writing her vows and can't seem to get them right. How soon can you get here? No, I'm glad you're back in town, son. No, would you mind helping? Justin sighed. I'll shower and be there in an hour. That's not soon enough. I'll be there as soon as I can. Justin refused to give in to her demands on his time. He loved his mother, but she had always expected him to drop everything for her and his sisters. It was exhausting living in town. He had planned to call Lauren that morning and then start writing, but now he'd need to change gears. After his shower, he dressed for the wedding knowing there was no way his mother would let him go back to the hotel before it was time for the wedding. She'd wanted him to stay at her house, but he couldn't do it. He needed his space from his family. As soon as he was in his rental car, he started a speaker call with Lauren, knowing it was her busy time, but it was his only time. Hopefully she'd answer, and he could at least hear her voice. Hello? Lauren, it's Justin. Sorry to call at breakfast time, but this is the only time I'll have all day. I'm on my way to my mom's to help my sister write her vows. Lauren sighed. I miss you. I can take a minute. Are there a lot of guests there? Just three rooms are occupied, so breakfast is easy. I made scones and a big plate of bacon. My favorite breakfast. I wish I was there with you instead of back here. Have you seen your family yet? Lauren asked. No, not yet. But I will in about five minutes, so that's all the time I have for the call. I'm so sorry. I really thought I'd be able to find time to talk to you. And to write a little, but they are being their usual selves and expecting me to be at their beck and call. Don't worry about me. Just do what you need to do while you're there and then get back to me soon. Her voice sounded disappointed, but he knew she understood. I finished my story last night and sent it to one of my professors. Really? That's amazing. Justin felt as if he'd finished a book himself, he was so excited for her finish. I'm really proud of you for sticking to it. Yeah. We'll see what she says I need to change, and then I'll work on finding a cover designer and an editor. That's really awesome. I can't wait to find out what your teacher thinks. And I'm in my parents' driveway. I'll try to find time to call tomorrow. All right. Have fun with your family. I'm really going to try. He ended the call, then said aloud, I love you, Lauren. He wanted to tell her that for the first time when he was with her. And he would. Asterisk. Lauren stared at the phone in her hand for a moment. A five-minute phone call. Nothing more. She understood he was busy, but he couldn't make time for more than five minutes. She shook her head and got back to work on the scones. She wasn't going to let herself freak out over Justin. But she wanted to. To her surprise, she heard back from her professor late that afternoon. There was an email waiting for her in her inbox when she checked. When she first saw Dr. Gold's name, she was certain it was just to tell her she'd read the story when she could, but instead, it was a commentary on the whole thing. Lauren. I have to say, I absolutely love this little trip down memory lane for you. I love the details and the intense emotions involved. I am very sorry about the death of your parents, and I'm thrilled you found love in your new home. Now, for my thoughts on the story itself. It was excellent. I made some editing notes in the document, telling you where I feel you need more description, 
and in a couple of places where I thought you got a little too flowery in your prose. I'd like to suggest that you go through my notes and fix those things, and then start submitting the story. I've never seen such a clean first draft. I always knew you had a great deal of potential and this story proved me right. You truly are an amazing young woman, Lauren, and I hope you continue on this writing journey. I'd also like to suggest maybe doing a story about you and your sisters and the work you've put in together to make the band be all you wanted it to be. I could see you writing a five-book women's fiction series about each sister. You don't have to take that suggestion of course, but I do believe it would sell. You don't need to spend your life cooking and cleaning. You need to write. Period. Eva Gold. Lauren read the email once more and let out a whoop of excitement. Dr. Gold had liked her manuscript. As soon as she was finished with her chores for the day, which still included dealing with Justin's room, she would go back through the notes her professor had sent. And then she'd find an editor. Lauren felt tears come to her eyes as she realized she'd finally done it. She'd found her dream. Chapter 21 By the time Justin came back on Monday evening, Lauren was flying high on her feelings about the book she'd finished and the series she was about to start about five sisters who moved to Bear Lake to start a band bee after their parents' untimely death. She'd already outlined her characters and was ready to start. She was just putting supper into bowls to serve when Justin walked in, disheveled from his long day of travel. He dropped his suitcase on the floor inside the kitchen door and reached for her, hugging her close, his cheek resting on the top of her head. I missed you. Lauren smiled up at him. I missed you too. It was a long weekend without you. But she had news, and it was wonderful news about the book she'd finished. She couldn't wait to share it with him, but she knew he'd need a little time to settle first. Justin sighed. I'm taking a five-minute shower and throwing my suitcase and laptop in my room, and then I'm coming out for supper. Do you want to walk after supper? I don't have long because I didn't get any writing done in Louisiana, but I need to have a few minutes with you. She nodded. I'd like that a lot. All right. I'll see you in five. Don't eat everything without me. Lauren laughed as he hurried off. The house was full that week, because the temperatures were still mild, which was a huge difference from the spring that had felt like winter almost into summer. She had made a sour cream beef enchilada casserole, an invention of her own, and she hoped everyone loved it as much as she did. She was serving it with rice, beans, and homemade guacamole as well as a side salad. It was weird to be cooking something in the Mexican food family for Brandon, who was so good at tacos, but she decided not to care. She was hungry for this, and she was going to serve it. The table was full for supper and Justin sat to Lauren's left. He kept grinning at her, obviously as happy to be back as she was to have him there. The meal went well, and everyone raved about the casserole. Conversation was lively as people talked about what they'd done in the area that day. I hate that some of the restaurants are closed, one woman said, but I'm determined to have fun anyway. Good. I think it's a beautiful time of year to be here, and you don't have to put up with the heavy summer crowds, Taylor said, trying to convince everyone this was the perfect time of year to hang out in Bear Lake. The summers were busy, but they were worried about the rest of the year. After supper, Lauren got up and walked to the back door, watching as two of her sisters headed for the kitchen. She loved the new arrangement that Kayla had suggested, making it easier for her to do what she wanted to do. Kayla had fostered and then adopted a little black kitten, and he was finally able to be left alone for a few hours. He'd been bottle-fed and very ill for a long time, and his new feisty attitude surprised them all. Kayla had also finished building a little cabana in the backyard, which was really more of a studio apartment. She would live there until she married Max around Christmas time, and then she would turn it over to Lauren, since she was the resident sister. Taylor could have it too, Lauren was sure, but she had a feeling Taylor would be married by then. 
Justin took Lauren's hand as soon as they got outside, and they headed down to the beach for their walk. Did you have a good weekend? Have you heard back from your professor yet? I have. The book is with an editor now, and she says she'll have it back to me in about two weeks. My professor loved it and suggested a related series of books about five sisters opening a bed and breakfast in Bear Lake and each of them finding love. I'm plotting it out and just about ready to start writing. Wow. You had a lot going on while I was gone. Do you need help finding a cover designer? I can ask some indie friends. Lauren pulled out her phone and tapped her loaded photos. She showed him the first two covers. What do you think? They're beautiful. Well, you've done so much without me. I was planning to help you when you got to this point. It's fine. I'm really happy with the progress I've made. Lauren smiled at him. How was the wedding? It was a wedding. There was no reception, because of how quickly she planned it, so we just all went back to my mom's and had a nice Cajun feast. Oh, and mom sent you a few recipes to look through. You told your mom about me? For some reason she couldn't put her finger on, she was shocked that he'd told his family that she existed. Of course, her family knew about him, but they were there. I did. Mom wants to meet you. All of my stuff is going to arrive here by moving truck in a few weeks, so I need to have a storage unit by then. Or better, yet a house. Who wants to live as a newlywed in a bed and breakfast? Lauren frowned at him. You met someone in Louisiana, after all? He shook his head and pulled a small box out of his pocket. I didn't. I was hoping you'd be my wife. He opened the box and showed her, and Lauren put her hand over her mouth. I wasn't expecting this. We haven't even used the L word yet. Well, she had in her book, but that didn't count. I said it out loud to you when I was on my way to my mom's on Saturday morning. I just waited to end the call first. Lauren blinked a couple of times. You know that doesn't count, right? I know. I love you, Lauren Renee Romriel. I knew from the moment I met you something would happen between us. I wasn't sure if it would be me strangling you or marrying you, but since I don't look good in stripes. They wear orange jumpsuits in prison now. Either way. Will you marry me? Justin held her eyes as he kept holding the ring out between them. Lauren nodded emphatically. I love you too, Justin, J. D. Tibbs. So much. Good. Will Taylor let us have the ceremony here on Saturday? Saturday? That's a little fast. Besides, we have a wedding here on Saturday. He groaned. Fine, the next Saturday. And Alyssa needs to find us a house, fast. You want me to plan a whole wedding in less than two weeks? Have you lost your mind? I have. I've lost it with love for you. Can we do it that quick? Sure. I have friends, family, and mad planning skills. Let's make it happen. Is your family coming? She asked. I sure hope not. Justin said emphatically. But we need to invite them. We can't really take off for a honeymoon until after my book is done, but I was thinking we could go somewhere romantic. Like Disney World? He groaned. Disney World? How is a place crowded with kids romantic? Trust me. It is. Yes? I'll think on it. Lauren took that as a yes. I bet I could wear Alyssa's wedding dress. I mean, you've seen it, but it'll fit, and it needs to be done fast. They kept walking and talking about their plans, and Lauren felt like the whole world was falling into place perfectly. She was marrying the man of her dreams, right after figuring out what her dream was. Yes, all the stars were in alignment. Finally. Epilogue. Lauren looked around her at Stacy's reception. They'd hired a band, 
and people were dancing happily. The food was disappearing, but there was more in the kitchen, so that wasn't a huge worry. The teens serving the food and keeping everything neat and tidy were doing a fabulous job. Everything seemed to be going well. She and her sisters had been working like mad women, trying to plan her wedding in another week. She'd decided not to do any cooking herself, instead letting Hannah and her staff for the bookstore take care of it. They would provide a meal and cake, and Lauren wouldn't have to worry about anything. Hannah walked up to her and smiled. This is going to be you in just a week. It is. I'm really excited to marry Justin. Weren't you two bickering about him being a serial killer at Alyssa's wedding? Hannah asked, looking a little confused. We were flirting. It wasn't obvious? Hannah just laughed and shook her head. How's the book coming? You know I want it in paperback for my bookstore. It will be. I got edits back this morning in half the time the editor promised them in, but I haven't had a chance to look at them yet. I'm really hoping I can have it out by mid-October. That's so exciting. You can come to my store and sign books. It'll be part of the grand opening. Lauren laughed. I'm not sure I'm ready for that. You should ask Justin instead. Justin? He's a writer? Hannah looked surprised and more than a little excited. Oh, I really need to catch you up. Lauren shook her head. He's J. D. Tibbs. No way. Hannah looked over at Justin, who was looking awkward off by himself. Anyone who was involved in the book world at all knew who J. D. Tibbs was. I'll go with you. He needs me beside him anyway. He really does look like it. Hannah said with a grin. When's the grand opening anyway? Lauren asked. She loved the idea of having a bookstore right there in Bear Lake Valley. It was going to be amazing. December 1st. We're going to cash in on Christmas sales. Awesome. Lauren led Hannah to Justin, and Hannah asked him to sign for the grand opening. Justin looked a little like a deer in headlights. I guess I can. I'm not sure I'll be good at it though. I'm not exactly great with people. Even ask Lauren. Lauren laughed and clutched Justin's arm, burying her head in his shoulder. You'll be great. I'll be right beside you. He smiled. I'll be fine then. It was only a day until the grand opening, and Hannah felt like she still had a million things to do. How was she supposed to have a successful opening without the comfortable chairs in place? She had all of the Romriel sisters, three of whom were no longer Romriels, and several friends, as well as the four women who would be working with her and they were doing everything they could to get everything in place. After the chaos was over, and everything was perfect, Hannah pulled her four business partners into the small café with her. Erica had put together a plate of finger sandwiches for them to share, and Rochelle had baked a cookie cake to celebrate. Sarah looked exhausted, but that made sense, since she had two teenage girls at home, and she was a widow. She had no support at all and she was running herself ragged. Now that the preliminary chaos of putting everything together was over, she could hopefully rest. Jessica was the last to come in, having felt the need to put five new boxes of books on the shelves. Hannah, you confirmed J. D. Tibbs for tomorrow? I did. Everything is set. We're going to conquer this together. Hannah was so excited she felt like she was going to vomit. This has been a long journey for all five of us, but it's here. And we're going to make this the best bookstore in all of Idaho. She raised her glass of Sprite in a toast. To the best team of women I've ever dreamed of working with. Now, Hannah just needed it to be successful. For all of them.